Hi, this is Shadi and today I'm saying to all of you, thank you. Thank you for 10,000 subscribers. This has been amazing. I have grown so much as a martial artist, as a person and as an intellectual doing this type of work. Your encouragement to constantly uh, put out content and studying and growing my own knowledge and your interactions all of it is just simply amazing thank you all i am very grateful and hopefully i can keep doing this now uh this whole thing started with me looking up Nawaza, the history the guards sweeps etc and trying to create a better and clearer image of all of this and one of the questions that we don't ask is why is there a split between standing and ground etc why is there such a thing in the first place if grappling is just grappling a lot of these old ancient civilizations uh, took each other down grappled on the ground so on and so forth but why is there a split that now we call judo and BJJ so the story goes as follows if you are someone that's gonna go into BJJ, you're probably gonna hear the story. The Brazilians learn Judo and they have some ground techniques, but they created a system around these techniques in order to get to them, set them up, etc. You hear probably people like Eddie Bravo that said this, uh, the time on the ground in Judo is limited, uh, so in BJJ they created this uh, unlimited world on the ground and create all these setups etc uh, if you are a beginner you want to go into BJJ that's the story that they'll probably tell you but you go in to BJJ you go to judo and then you start doing Neiwaza with your friends Randori you are rolling and then you start to ask yourself hey wait a minute what's going on here I thought this was just particular to the Brazilians etc and then you go deeper down the rabbit hole and then you find something called Kosen Judo. You see them doing spider guards, lasso, Teleriva, doing these sweeps, uh, taking the back. You see Oda's footage and you're just amazed what's going on around here. This whole Brazil, Brazil thing just don't make any sense. What's going on? You get excited. You, your curiosity increases. You start to look more into it. Then you realize that quote-unquote Kosen is not a style or a federation, kind of like Tomiki and Aikikai, but rather it is a specific rule set just being done by high school and college kids in competitions. And it is all Kodokan in the end, and this is just Neiwaza that they're doing. And then you start to look further into their teachers. Who are their teachers? You start to see people like Kanemitsu, Yaichi Oe, you start to see Tsunitane Oda uh, at the Busen, you see people like Kenshiro Abe, Masahiko Kimura, Tatsukuma Yoshijima, a lot of these people who are just so talented standing and on the ground. And then you start to see that, you know, this does not reflect uh, the Neiwaza of today or the IJF or Olympic Judo of today. So, what's going on? Why is there. Uh, a decline or why is there no more of this what happened so you start to dig a little bit more and then you see that there's a hierarchy in those uh, judokas on the ground and it started with a man called Hajime Isogai Hajime Isogai uh, left Tokyo in order to branch out the Kodokan he went to Kyoto specifically the second biggest city in Japan in order to spread Kano Jiu Jitsu and he was particularly enamored and invested in the ground. But why was he invested in the ground in the first place? Because a few years earlier in Kyoto, there was a man, a Fusen Ryu master, by the name of Mataemon Tanabe, who was just taking everyone to the ground, working his eel restraint and snake and frog concept, and breaking legs and choking people out, and thus the need to develop the ground game and craft it began because of this particular defeat and 
you also start to understand that there is a split. You have the Tokyo branch and you have the Kyoto branch. The Tokyo branch uh, under Kano, they reflect a lot of the Tenshin Shinryu and the Kitoriyu. A lot of Nagewaza, a lot of Randori, a lot of Kata and some Neiwaza to complement it once the fight goes to the ground. So pretty much like the Judo of today, you have all these world championships in Kata. You have the IJF, Grand Prix, Grand Slam, the Olympics, and it all reflects the kind of the Judo of Tokyo. Now, do they have some Neiwaza? Of course, one of the great examples of the Tokyo Neiwaza Masters was Kaichiro Samura, but that's uh, that's one particular apple in the whole bunch. So here the split started with the branching of the Kodokan and also that defeat in Kyoto against a groundmaster that created this whole people concentrating on the ground and people concentrating on the takedown and then just relating it in with the ground with just like Osaikomi or an armbar if it offered itself like the IJF judo of today. The split started with the whole Kyoto thing. Now, where does Brazil lie in all of this? So, the people that went and taught the Brazilians are also judokas. They also experienced what was going on in Japan. They experienced the split, etc. So people ask me, so Maeda knew the ground if he left so early when Hajime Isogai was crafting Neiwaza, etc. Did he know any groundwork? Of course, it has been a few years after the whole Tanabe incident in Kyoto. So is there Neiwaza teaching that reached to him? Of course. But according to Robert Drysdale uh, in his recent podcast on the Jits Guy podcast, the podcast that I was featured in uh, a while back, they talked about, he says that the contribution of people like Cheo Omori, Takeo Yano, etc. is far more uh, valuable in his opinion when it comes to you know, creating a lineage, creating something, uh, giving the Brazilians something, uh, a foundation in essence in order for them to grow. So let's see if the Tokyo Kyoto split affected the Brazilians. Now, who are those who truly gave for the Brazilians as Japanese judokas? The first one being, of course, Gioji Omori or Jo Omori who was the student of Tokugoru Ito. Does he have some sort of link between him and Kyoto? Yes. So his uh, training partner and sparring partner was Sampo Toku. Uh, who was Sampo Toku? He was the student of Kaichiro Samura. Kaichiro Samura was the man that Hajime Isogai asked for personally in order to come and help him to conclude the trilogy between him and Tanabe. He was a Neiwaza expert, so Omori and Toku were sparring non-stop on the ground, if I had to guess. The second one being a, a Navy uh, sailor by the name of Takeo Yano. Takeo Yano has a huge contribution to uh, BJJ, in my opinion. First of all, he is a Dai Nippon Butoku Kai Judoka from Kyoto, a groundmaster, according to Ivan Gomez himself, when he traveled and when he taught them in the 30s, he is the one that uh, introduced them to the heel hook. One of the uh, more most sophisticated leg locks ever, which is the heel hook, was introduced to the Brazilians by Takeo Yano, a Kyoto uh, judoka. And also he sparred with and trained with George Gracie, uh, Helio, and even beat Valdemar Santana, the man that beat both Kimura and Elio Gracie, he lost to Takeo Yano via arm lock. Uh, Takeo Yano settled in the north of Brazil. He was in the navy, in the Imperial Navy, so that, hence the Dainippon Butokukai Kyoto thing, because the Dainippon Butokukai was allied with the Imperial regime and the Imperial Army of Japan. And it was in Kyoto, hence the emphasis on the ground. So, does the split of Tokyo being more of a stand-up and Kyoto being more on the ground affected the Brazilians? Hell yes. And that's why you see the split in the first place. It's not because it's uh, they took Kosen Judo or 
they took these techniques of on the ground like you saw in the old Tenshin Shinyu Ryu scrolls and then they crafted the system around them it wasn't the Japanese did the choke this way and my uh, my grandfather knew how to fight off his back nobody else could do it before him none of that it's because the most influential people that gave judo to Brazil were either direct Kyoto judokas or at some link with them and that's at least the most clear picture that I have ever come up with until now with all the research and all the studies of the people that I've done so to conclude in my opinion Matae Montanabe with the whole Hajime Isogai thing created arguably the biggest ripple effect in martial arts history the thing that Tanabe did caused an incredible butterfly effect that even till this day we are still talking we are still looking for proof we are still discussing trying to find the right answer and trying to paint the most clear image Hajime Isogai had to beat him in, or in order to honor the Kodokan he had to learn the ground he had to uh, master it Kano wanted to branch out from Tokyo and spread it across Japan he sent Isogai to become head instructor while he had some freedom away from the Kodokan he started to experiment more with the ground he gave birth to arguably one of the best ground masters ever uh, Tsunetane Oda and Kaimitsu Yaichiyoe inventor of the triangle choke and the knee bar and a lot of these uh, Kyoto judokas Takeo Yano uh, all of them were under the influence of Hajime Isogai and created this lineage of ground masters that eventually found its way to Brazil and that's how you have the split between people going more for stand-up and people going more for the ground uh, now allow me to be a bit objective I've talked about the guard I've talked about the claims I've talked about the Rufino dos Santos actions etc but in a way there was a silver lining in all of this because if it if it didn't if the seed was not planted in Brazil and the decline of Neuaza continued the maximum we would have is the Neuaza of the European judo with Shozo Awadzu and a little bit or maybe something like Nanate judo or Kosen judo would be more uh, popular but due to the fact that the seed has been planted in Brazil now it is far more mainstream so in a way I am thankful that it reached Brazil etc now the claims we can dispute them all day long when it comes to the guard the inventions etc but the good thing about it is that probably Neuaza would have regressed and there is some elements of it here and there kind of like the Neuaza in judo today we are I'm lucky to have judo in France because the Neuaza is somewhat uh, uh, how do you say evolved and there's also Kosen which is very secluded so in a way there is good that it planted in Brazil now the people that took it with their claims etc that's another issue but to be subjective to be fair I am thankful that these people took it they were talented enough to spar challenge others and ultimately keep it on the map uh, once again I would like to thank all of you for 10,000 subscribers this has been an amazing journey and hopefully it doesn't end anytime soon so as a 10,000 subscriber special or resolution the first being I did some research and I found that there is a uh, Shodokan Aikido club uh, a few kilometers here away from me it is a small club nonetheless they do Tomiki Aikido so if you would like me to go there uh, vlog the whole thing see the class structure uh, watch me spar with them see how it goes but first I have to contact them and tell them about my project and the second and it's uh, a far away uh, goal but nonetheless it is an idea in my head is to go to both Kyoto and Tokyo see how the Kodokan trains their methodology their structure and also go to Kyoto at the Imperial University and see how the structure of Kosen rule set etc is there and share it with you all and also visit the uh, archives and history 
department of the Kodokan and see how the historians there work and how they operate and what they are trying to do and what they are trying to achieve. That's also another goal. Uh, let me know down below if you are interested in all of this. The first one being the Shodokan Aikido in France and Tokyo and Japan, everything else in the future. But obviously for now, this is not possible. So once again, thank you all for your support. Even those who just leave uh, random comments, not even debating, just being negative. And also, also those who leave constructive criticism and, and those who just come out and show their support. I am thankful for all of you. Uh, if you have anything else to add, let me know down below. This was Shed.